Judge upholds $350,000 award against Michigan dealership for wrongful repossession. Spot delivery and repossession case showed unlawful conduct conduct by Ann Arbor dealership was, quote, business as usual, the federal judge said. Let me read you this story, Dad. A federal judge upheld a $350,000 punitive damages award against the Michigan car dealer. In a spot delivery and wrongful repossession case, the U.S. District du- Judge David Lawson rejected the argument by suburban Chevrolet Cadillac in Ann Arbor that the jury awarded in favor of Tina McPherson uh, was excessive. In July 2020, McPherson made a $2,000 down payment on a 2017 Dodge Durango and applied for financing from two lenders, according to the suit. The next day, she completed the paperwork and took delivery of the vehicle. About a week later, she received an adverse action notice from one of the lenders. The suit alleged Suburban then submitted an application for different terms to a third lender without her permission. McPherson refused to execute the new financing documents or return the title. The dealership then hired a towing company to repossess the Durango, and its finance manager told her that the store was withholding $900 of her down payment to cover the expenses, according to the suit. A trial and jur- uh, tr- at trial, a jury found the dealership liable for violations of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Equal Credit Opportunity Act, and state laws, as well as conversion and improper repossession. Wow. No bueno. Yeah, that, that, that reminds me of why I was so thrilled to work for the people that I worked for last. And, and what I mean by that is the owner had a rule. Made perfect sense to me. If we submitted your credit application and we couldn't get an approval while you were there, we were not spot delivering the car unless you you had a credit history and a credit score like 750 and above and a credit history that would support the bank uh, eventually approving the loan. Otherwise, we didn't really do spot deliveries. If if. Can you explain what a spot delivery is, Pops? Spot delivery is a, having the customer sign all the paperwork at the agreed upon uh, payments and all that neat stuff, um, assuming that you are going to get the approval from the bank. And then you allow the customer to drive off in their new vehicle, even though the bank hasn't approved the loan yet. That's a spot delivery. Um, and the, the idea behind it is that if somebody goes home in their new car and their friends and neighbors see it in their driveway, if you call them three, four, five, six days later and say, oh, my goodness, we weren't able to get the loan approved um, at the rates that we had anticipated, we need you to come back and sign a new contract. Most people are just going to come back and sign a new contract because they don't want to explain to their friends and neighbors that they weren't allowed to keep the car. So that's a spot delivery. Mm-hmm. And, and thankfully, the people that I, we did not do that because we didn't want to put ourselves or the customer in that position. And I have worked at many dealerships where they, I told you the story when, I first moved to uh, to Maryland from Arizona, and I was working at a dealership. Um, it was an Acura store, and like my first week there, there were people bringing back an MDX that they had been in for a month. Wow. Okay, that they were unable to get the loan approved for. In it for a month, it had like 15, 1,800 miles on it. I never, you know, uh, uh, and do you think those folks were ever saying, oh, you need to go to XYZ Acura because they're really going to treat you right. They're going to let you drive a car free for a month. And then they're going to ask you to bring the damn thing back. Um, Terrible. So, yeah, it is. It is, it, it, is a, it is an awful situation. And it goes on every day. And most people just acquiesce. Obviously, this woman did not no. uh, file suit one, um, and it's going to cost the dealership three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. GM's Google built-in is glitchy; requires a subscription to use Google Maps. If you don't pay for a connected vehicle plan, you can't use features like Google Maps or Google Assistant. Dad, we have more automakers continuing to go down the path of trying to make a bunch of money 
from subscriptions and software in their vehicles during their long-term testing, Motor Trend's long-term testing of a 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2, they realized that even though they were paying for things, they couldn't get Google Maps or the Assistant to actually work. It would just freeze. The, the future of automotive, man, where you have to subscribe for features in your car and they don't work, just sounds abysmal to me. Uh, it does. And and uh, maybe, maybe they don't offer uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in those vehicles, because if they did, then I'm guessing... Google Maps would work, wouldn't it? Um, Crazy concept, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't know because, well, I, I have I have an Android phone, a Google Pixel phone, and and one of the wonderful things about uh, Minis is that until the 2025 model year, they still didn't offer Android Auto, and I'm not getting another Mini just because now I can get Android Auto. I read somewhere the other day that. GM figures that they, you know, software and software subscriptions. It was either GM or Ford. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, and where, you know, they see this as a pathway to uh, great earnings because yeah, billions. Uh, the, the, the amount of gross profit on these subscriptions is like around 50%. And I, it might have been Ford. And and they figure they earned a billion dollars last year um, in software. And, but these are the same people who probably two or three years ago said, we're expecting to be able to make 20 to $25 billion a year. You know, so far they got it up to a billion on 750,000 subscriptions. Either it indicates that Americans just are not willing to pay for these subscriptions, yeah. Or once again, these auto manufacturers have overestimated what it is they think these things can do for them. I know Stellantis is figuring it's a twenty-five to thirty billion dollar a year um, uh, return. It's not. Uh, it's just wild, man. It's like your car is just another, it's like another cell phone that's just going to have apps and you're going to have to pay for downloads to it. It's just, it, it bummed me out when I saw that headline. Another headline, Dad, yes. this is a press release from Cox Automotive, the largest, most well-respected company in automotive. Auto Trader releases ASMR road trip playlist for dogs to celebrate National Dog Day. Teams up with country singer Walker Hayes. I want to make so much money here at Car Edge that yes. we can release this type of press release a couple of years from now. I want to release a dog ASMR soundtrack with a country music star. Come on, man. That's, well, that's first, of all, for, first of all, are, are we listening to it or are the dogs listening to it? And is it at such a high pitch that humans can't hear it? Okay. So it's just for the dogs. And secondly, who the hell is Walker Hayes? <laughs> yeah, no offense, to Walker Hayes. You probably don't know us, but yeah. we definitely don't know you. He's dead. I have no idea who Walker Hayes is. Um, yeah, could we make enough money someday that can we be like Ford and just piss away one point nine billion a year in losses? <laughs> Come on, man, make it so.